Your homework is to memorize this and write it 15 times. Welcome to the coolest, pimpest half hour of fun on TV. This is Brain Stew with Jennifer Pullen. This week on Brain Stew, we visit three really cool lighthouses. One of them happens to be the tallest one in North America. Plus, we speak to a United States Coast Guard Lieutenant Commander and find out what he has to do with lighthouses. And you gotta check out this week's experiment. It's really cool. Hey, hey, hands off the remote. We're going lighthouse hunting. It's time to have you brain stew. Hello, all you brain stewers. Welcome to another edition of the coolest kid show on TV. My name is Jennifer Pulley, and this week, brain stew is stewing your brain with lighthouses. Basically, a lighthouse is what its name says it is. A lighthouse is a house or structure that projects its light at night to guide ships sailing on the waters along the coast. You know, lighthouses aren't only used at night. I mean, they can be used during the day as a visual marker for ships. It's like all these ships out here. Would you believe that the first lighthouses, I mean, the earliest ones, weren't even really houses at all? Really? Yeah, they were simply bonfires built on hills to guide ships. Get out. Lighthouses have come a long way since then. In the United States alone, there have been more than 1,500 lighthouses built. Where are lighthouses built? Oh, I'm just so proud of you. You got that brain turned on? That's so great. All right, let me answer your question. Lighthouses are built along a coastline, just like this. Or they're built on isolated rocks or small islands. Or they're also built at entrances to harbors, rivers, and bays. Lighthouses are built to protect the ships and the people that travel along the water. They gotta see where they're going. I can't see anything. Who operates the lighthouses? Today, the United States Coast Guard operates all the working lighthouses. But years and years ago, operators were called Ooh. keepers. Lighthouses had keepers that Ooh. operated the lighthouse. It was their job to make sure that that light was working every single night. The mariners at sea depended on it. Now remember, most lighthouses were built in very isolated areas. The family, the keeper's family, either lived in the lighthouse itself or on the ground. That job could be real long and lonely. We've got 1,500 lighthouses to see. We better get cracking. Well, let's get real, guys. As much as we wanted to see all the 1,500 lighthouses that are built, we only have a 30-minute show. So we decided to visit three lighthouses. Each one has a very unique history. We're gonna learn all about them. Since the United States Coast Guard takes care of the lighthouses today, let's meet John. He's a lieutenant commander for the United States Coast Guard. Hey John, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Why are lighthouses so important? Well, lighthouses are important because by day they have distinguishing marks that ships and navigators can see so they don't run aground. And by night, every lighthouse has a distinguishing light that they can use so that they navigate safely in harbors and then you can transit up and down the coast. You gotta dig my um, orange United States Coast Guard jacket. It's pretty cool, John let me have it. Well, I have to get it back to him. Yes. Oh, anyway. How do lighthouses work? Well, lighthouses are, are based on the concept of focusing light in one direction. And the way they do that is through a lens or a bunch of prisms. And what they do is they bend the light so it's all pointed in one specific direction and then it's focused and then this way it's more intense and more powerful and can be seen further. And the, uh, the gentleman that discovered that was a man by the name of Fresnel, and now we incorporate Fresnel lenses. And that's the whole system behind the lighthouse. Okay, so speaking of this really intense light, how far can a lighthouse shine its beam? Well, that all depends, because the Earth is curved, and the higher the lighthouse is, the further it can be seen, because if it's lower, the less you can see it. And uh, also affecting it is the intensity of the light. If it's brighter, naturally you can see it further. And the weather, if it's foggy, you're not gonna see the light as far. But in general, lighthouses can be seen for up to 20 miles. Wow. A long way. Well, back in the day, we know that there was like lighthouse keepers. Right. Okay, and now the United States Coast Guard takes care of the working lighthouses. Correct. What does the Coast Guard do to take care of the working lighthouses? Well, you, you want to make sure that the structure's intact. Uh, we have a lighthouse keeper here at, at Cape Henry who makes sure that everything works properly. Uh, they check the structure, the granite base, the steel plates, and then this light dis uh, distinguishes a, a Morse code uniform which is the signal for Cape Henry light. So we naturally have to make sure that that light is, is 
flashing at the right frequency to give out that uniform signal. So it's not just a beam of light. I mean, this, this light actually flashes here? Yes, it does. So you just told me that this is the new Cape Henry Lighthouse, right? That's right. And we're going to go up in it, right? You got it. OK, um, I'll take the elevator truck. Uh, good luck, Jennifer. 207 stairs. Uh, all right, I'm ready. All right, <laughs> let's go. No elevator, man. That stinks. OK, I'm ready. Uh, you know, John, I have a question. Why is this called the New Cape Henry Lighthouse? I mean, where did it get its name? Well, let's go to the top, uh, and I'll show you and tell you. Oh, great. You want to make me work for the question? You got it. OK, John said there's no elevator, so let me check it out. Persons in poor health should not try to climb it. OK, I got a good heart. My <laughs> Good. I'm not too wacko. And I got to get, OK, stairs. I'm going. I'm going. Ooh, these are pretty steep stairs, John. It's a good workout. I could run these. Oh. All right, is this it? Are we here? Uh, just a little bit more. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is like the light at the end of the tunnel. That's yeah, very funny. <laughs> Breathing hard there, John? Uh, no. <laughs> 205, 206, 207. Oh, John, this is awesome. Isn't this nice? Oh, look at this. Well, I'm getting a little dizzy. This is the prism I was telling you about. Yeah, this is the lens. The lens, the Fresnel lens. OK, wait a minute. I'm seeing red. I'm seeing red. What's up here, John? That indicates that uh, there's danger. Don't. It's a danger area. And there's a certain section of light that uh, mariners need to be aware of. And that's a distinguishing characteristic of the light. So when you're out on, if you're a mariner and you're out right. on the ocean, you'll see a white light and a red light? Is that right? From different angles. From di ah. Right. So if you're facing this way, you'll see white. But in this certain arc of uh, light, you'll see red. OK, what's so dangerous over here that they need to be aware of? Could that? be rocks, could be a shoal, could be a jetty. But in general, red indicates danger. OK, and the light is working here as we speak. Yep. This is really cool. Now, why is it, um, what's it doing? It's giving out Morse code signal uniform. Um, it, it's constant, goes 24 hours a day, and that's what distinguishes it from other lights up and down the coast in the, in the vicinity. Why does this call it the new Cape Henry Lighthouse? Well, generally, uh, lighthouses are named after the most prominent geographic feature in the area. And in this case, we're on Cape Henry. And it's called the new Cape Henry Light because the original light was uh, deemed unacceptable because it was deteriorating, so they rebuilt the light. The old light is just off to the, uh, to the other side of the lighthouse here, and this is the new lighthouse. Cool. And so Cape Henry is where? Where Can we see it from here? We're on Cape Henry right now. Oh, this is where we are. This is on this Cape, is Cape Henry. Henry. Oh, John, this view is awesome. Wow. Pretty nice. Yeah, this is so, it's such a clear day. This is great. When was the new lighthouse built? It was built around 1881. That's when the new Cape Henry Lighthouse was built. What's it made of? It's got a granite base, and then it's got steel plates for the, the main tower of the, uh, of the lighthouse. Uh, about 1,700,000 pounds of steel. And then the bolts itself, there's 7,000 pounds of just bolts in this lighthouse. Wow. OK, I know what it's made of. Okay. How tall is this? 165 lighthouse? feet. OK, John, I said this view is great. Right. What are we looking at? <laughs> well, we're at Cape Henry. Uh, Virginia Beach is down that way. And out in the distance, you can see Chesapeake Bay light. And over in that vicinity is Cape Charles. And that's the eastern shore of Virginia? Right. Well, that kind of gives us an idea of where we are. So yep. Virginia Beach is that way. Right. And then that's the Chesapeake Bay light out there. That's far. I mean, now I can see that thing way out there. How, right. how far is that from Well, from it's where? 12 miles offshore. <gasps> but we're at an angle. So we're right about that 20 miles I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. And then the, the lighthouse over there, and that's, that's the Cape Charles Lighthouse. Right. So I guess that warns mariners over there so they can kind of be aware of the, of the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. Right. That, you don't want to hit that. No, you don't. All right, John, tell me if I've got this straight. The okay. United States Coast Guard mans the new Cape Henry Lighthouse, which Correct. we're in right now. Right. Okay. What's the purpose of the, having this new Cape Henry Lighthouse right here at Cape Henry? I mean, what's, what's the main purpose? Well, as you can see, we're right here at the entrance of uh, Chesapeake Bay. And uh, there's thousands of ships that come in and out every day, just like that uh, commercial vessel right there. there but there's fishing vessels, uh, commercial vessels, pleasure craft, 
And this lighthouse provides them uh, some sense of direction so that they can remain safe and operate and enjoy the water. Well, John, I want to thank you so much for all the cool Coast Guard information, all the lighthouse information, and for giving us a tour of the new Cape Henry Lighthouse. It was great. Anytime. Rain students will come back anytime they want to visit. That sounds awesome. And maybe we can get an elevator installed so my legs don't hurt. All right, we'll work on that one. All right. Okay. Is there an old Cape Henry Lighthouse? You know, I was waiting for you to ask that. Sure there is. The old one is just to our northwest. Do you see it right there, that little thing? The United States Coast Guard doesn't run the old Cape Henry Lighthouse. In fact, it's run by the APVA, and that stands for the Association for the Preservation of Virginia Antiquities. Basically, what I'm saying, guys, is that old lighthouse there is a pretty special antique, and it needs to be taken care of. Up next, we visit John. Again? Well, a different John. He's going to give us a tour of the old Cape Henry Lighthouse. Hey, check out this brain strain while we take a short break. Okay, John, we're dying to know, why is the old Cape Henry Lighthouse so important? Well, old Cape Henry Lighthouse is the first lighthouse built on the Chesapeake Bay. It's the first lighthouse to be approved, to be built by the Congress of the United States, approved by George Washington, President of the United States, which makes this the first lighthouse built as a United States lighthouse. And we're here. I'm and so we're here. proud. Thank you. This is great. How old is this lighthouse? 207 years old. It was construction began in 1791, completed in 1792. In October of 1792, it became operational. Okay, John, I can barely see the lighthouse. You think we can get a closer look? Yes, we may. We can go all the way up if you wish. Oh, I would love that. Well, let's go. All right. All right, John, you're telling me that we have to uh, walk stairs before we can walk the stairs up in the lighthouse? That is correct, ma'am. Uh, you guys From are the, killing us. Well, the <laughs> exercise is good. From the bottom of the steps to the top, there's 188 <laughs> steps. That doesn't count those that we just came yes, up Yes, ma'am. Yes, oh, ma'am. That does count the ones we just came up. What's this old lighthouse made of? It's made out of sandstone and brick. It's made from the same Ooh. quarry as the United States Capitol in D.C. Is it come really? from. Yes, ma'am. And I see it's built up on a hill. Yes, ma'am. This was the tallest sand dune in the area when this was constructed. How tall is it? The height of the... Uh, Lighthouse is 90 feet. Of course, being up on the hill makes it a little higher yeah. where you can see a little bit further. Okay, John, I've already taken on the new Cape Henry Lighthouse. I want to take on the old. Can we go? I'll be my guest. Let's All right, go. All right, let's go. More stairs. We're almost there. Whee! Hello. Hello yourself. Oh, John, this is so awesome. John, are these are the lights that uh, that are inside this lighthouse? These project about 20 miles out? Uh, no, ma'am. These lights, uh, we allow the Army here on base to illuminate the lighthouse each year for Christmas. And these are the uh, Christmas lights uh, that the Army put up every December. I was going to say, John, I don't think these lights are going to be projecting 20 miles out. It's going to be saving any ships. How did this lighthouse used to give off light? The real light was, of course, located right here in the center of the dome here. You had a small space to walk around the outside. Like I mentioned earlier, it was a fish oil lamp. The keeper had to come up every morning, trim the wicks, and refill his oil drums. Like a big candle? That's correct. I guess the light doesn't work here at the old Cape Henry Lighthouse. No, ma'am. The uh, lighthouse for the old Cape Henry now is in the Mariners Museum in Newport News. We wished it was back here, but uh, we, we don't have it at this time. You guys have been replaced then, I guess, by the new Cape Henry oh, Lighthouse. Oh, yes, ma'am. The uh, new uh, Cape Henry Lighthouse, uh, when electricity was uh, invented, uh, they converted to that, and it was more reasonable and expense to build the uh, new one than this one, which we're very thankful they did because that's the tallest cast iron coated lighthouse in the United States. Oh. And uh, that gives us two historical lighthouses on the same point here at Cape Henry. We are so lucky to be here. Right over to the, your left over there, that's the first landing where Captain John Smith, no, prior to going up and colonizing Jamestown, he landed here, stayed here for about a week. In 1607, right? That's correct, and then uh, 
went up and colonized Jamestown. So many people don't realize the history involved right here. Well, from the old Cape Henry Lighthouse, we see the new Cape Henry Lighthouse. This is a great view, and this is, this is awesome. I just want to thank you so much, John, for enlightening our brains with facts about lighthouses. Well, you're more than welcome, and any time brains do wish to come back, they're more than welcome. Please just let me know, and glad to have you at any time. That would be great. John, does that mean I have to climb down through that little hole again? Uh, yes, ma'am, and, and unless you want to one step through. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you want to see the tallest lighthouse in North America? Well, that's not it, and neither is this. Up next, Brains do Feed Your Brain an Experiment and takes a tour of a North Carolina lighthouse that protects an area called the Graveyard of the Atlantic. Hey, did you get that brain strain? I hope it strained your brain. Guys, meet Rob. Okay, Rob, we've seen the old Cape Henry Lighthouse. We've seen the new Cape Henry Lighthouse. What lighthouse is this? This is the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. Why is this lighthouse called Cape Hatteras? The name Hatteras comes from the name given by Indians, and when the English first arrived here, and they saw the Native Americans in their village, and they asked them, hey, what do you call this place? And it sounded like Hatterask. And so they said, let's spell it so that the way, we, the way it sounds. And as time passes and they redo the maps, the spelling changed and it started to sound like Hatteras. We talk about Cape Hatteras. I know where we got the name Hatteras from, from the Indians, but what is a Cape? The name Cape is a geographic term that describes a protrusion of land going out from a shoreline. So when you look at it on the map, it looks like a point of land. And it's surrounded by water, usually on three sides. Locals call Cape Hatteras the point, and that goes a lot towards explaining um, the description and definition of a cape. Is a cape dangerous? A cape around here is dangerous. We've got lots of sand. We don't have rocks, but shoals are dangerous things, and shoals exist right out from the cape going out 14 miles. Ships don't like this place at all. <laughs> and that's why they call this area the graveyard of the Atlantic. So many vessels have sunk ever since vessels have been coming by here. This isn't the only place where shipwrecks have occurred with the cave and those uh, diamond shoals. Yeah. But you do have them driven right onto the beach hundreds and hundreds of times over history. What is the purpose of a lighthouse? To protect life and property. And they are reassured and they feel so good when that light is on and okay, we know we're at Cape Hatteras, for example, and they continue on. So uh, Rob, we're gonna go up inside the lighthouse. All 268 steps of it. Oh, oh. Rob. Well, hey, this is my exercise for the day. Can you, how, how tall is this lighthouse? I mean, it's tall. How tall it, is it? You can see 20 miles at the top where we're going to go. Uh -huh. It is 200 feet high, more or less. It's the tallest one in North America? It's the tallest one in North America. We haven't found any other lighthouse taller than this one. So oh, that's... I'm so proud to be here. What is the Hatteras Lighthouse made of? Iron, granite, and brick. And it's got pine timbers it's standing on. Two Underneath. feet of that. Yeah. Underneath. So there's six more feet of lighthouse down below what we see until that you get past that first layer of granite, and then it's got two layers of wood, and the wood's laid crossways. You want to go in? I'm dying to get on this stair. <laughs> I'm dying, Rob. Let's do it. You might want to do a little bit of stretching and take lots of breaths so your lungs can catch up with you by the time we get to the 200-foot level. Okay. Gonna do. Are we there yet? <laughs> oh yeah, we're, we're almost. Oh yeah, almost there, right? We're still Woo! waiting. How many? 65, 66, 67, 68, 268. What a view! This is gorgeous. 
Oh man, well hey, this is the light of the lighthouse, right? This is the soul of a lighthouse. How is the light powered? You see those light bulbs in these spotlights Whoa. and they're a thousand watts of power. There's some 800,000 candle power. That's how light is usually measured. Yeah. And that can be seen as far as necessary. 20 miles, you said? 20 miles. On a clear night? On a good night, that's exactly right. Okay, now, that, this is electric, obviously. How was the lighthouse powered before electricity was invented? This was powered by 1950 with electricity. Now, before then, they used kerosene, you know, stuff where they didn't have the power lines. Like oil? So what you used, you carried up, and that was uh, four yes. and a half gallons at a time of kerosene. I noticed there's one light here, and then there's another one over here. Just like it. Okay. What happens to these lights in the lighthouse? Like, what do they do? They're flashing out in opposite directions, and how it makes its flash is from this electric motor that's down below everything, and that motor will revolve these two spotlights or beacons. And by the time it makes a complete turn, it's 15 seconds for that complete turn. We'll divide that in half with these two lights face back to back. You've got a seven and a half second flash when you're that sailor out to sea looking for something to reassure himself. So we see the flash of this light and then it rotates. Exactly, so seconds. at night it looks like a giant with two arms of light constantly going around. Oh, Rob, this is amazing. Look at this view. It's great. You can see 20 miles out here now. How does erosion affect our lighthouses? The reason why we've got a problem here with the lighthouse and why we're worried about it being dropped during a hurricane is that it's obviously got to have sand underneath it. Yeah. Well, when it was a brand new lighthouse, it had sand not only around here, but way out there. And it's 1,600, 2,000 feet of beach that was once out here. So erosion so has really been affecting It I sure guess. has. And it's been a rate of some 13 feet a year, but and th some years are fine. And in fact, there might be years where it tries to sneak up and build out a little more. But then comes the hurricane and it takes all that and more. And you wind up with a deficit and of sand. Sure. And sand's just leaving where we're facing east. But as time, and while that is happening, sand is building as you're looking south on that stretch of beach looking south that's where a lot of the sand tends to go and there's something else that's worth uh, looking at you see that orange spot in the middle of that scrub vegetation yeah yeah i kind of see it and you notice how that that cut in the vegetation leads right up to the lighthouse it well, looks it helps yeah. explain where the lighthouse would go okay so wait let me get this straight rob Right there, that orange marker is where they're going to move this lighthouse, so this lighthouse is not going to be here in this spot anymore? When us people build something, we just don't like to see the land around it start to go, yeah. and so you got to deal with it. Yeah, and if this were to stay here, let's just say you guys decided not to move it, what could happen? It's not going to be properly protected. It might start looking a little different as nature does her thing and rearranges things whether we like it or not. Why is the lighthouse painted black and white? Those are excellent colors when you want contrast, don't you agree? Yeah, they so are. So when you're miles at sea and you're, you're, you're in your sailing vessel, you want the maximum contrast with inside of this tower so you can look at a pattern. And this looks like a day mark out to sea. And with that diagonal black and white pattern, you, you know you're going back to the tatters. Lighthouses help guide ships through the water at night. The light travels through the air. Can lighthouses always be seen by ships? Let's find out. We need a plastic bag, a piece of cardboard, and wax paper. Here's the procedure. Step one, hold out the plastic bag and look through it with one eye. Step two, take the wax paper and put it up to your eye and look through it. Step three, hold the cardboard up and look through it. Here are the results. When I look through the plastic bag, I can see things really easy. When I look through the wax paper, things are dull and blurry. When I look through the cardboard, well, I'm not Superman, so I can't see through the cardboard. Excuse me, but what does this have to do with lighthouses? 
I'll tell you, in order for you to see anything, light must be reflected from the object you are looking at to your eyes. The plastic baggie is an example of transparent material. Light moves straight through this material and lets you see objects as they are. A clear night will make it very easy for a ship to see a lighthouse because the air is transparent and clear. The wax paper is an example of translucent material. It changes the direction of light as it passes through. Heavy rain could be translucent and might not let a ship see a lighthouse clearly. The cardboard is an example of an opaque material. No light can pass through. Very dense fog would be considered opaque and ships would not be able to see a lighthouse at all. Rob, thank you so much for the tour of Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. You're so welcome. Brain Stew is welcome back here anytime. We'll be back, but we'll be back over there, right? Yeah, down <laughs> that way. That's right, a little, little bit over that way. Take a right instead of a left. Okay. Hey, is your Brain Stew or what? If you don't know more about lighthouses than you knew 30 minutes ago, maybe you need to get your light examined. <laughs> anyway, as I always say, keep that big brain of yours stewing, because you never know what you learn. Jennifer Pulley signing off, Buxton, North Carolina. Hey, Patrick! We got 1,500 li lighthouses to see. Most lighthouses were built in very isolated areas, so the job could... <laughs> could... <laughs> oh, hello! Hi! <laughs> so that ships sailing on the waters along the coast can be guided. They gotta see where they're going. I can't see anything. And I don't have a quarter. John, I'm just dying to know. What, <laughs> why do I mess up on the first question? What was the hat, oh. <laughs> What was the hat Chris how? Um, lighthouse made up. <laughs> when I look through the cardboard, 